So we've got Zach's 2012 F250 Super Duty in here today, and we're gonna put this Carly suspension two and a half inch pin top kit on it. Comes with some beautiful reservoir shocks, some nice coil springs, extended brake lines, some brackets for the reservoirs, caster shims, and then we're gonna add these leaf packs to the rear leaf springs and then it's got this awesome track bar with it too. So really nice parts and should make this truck look and perform really well. So Zach is starting by pulling the inner fender liners out here. He's got this one out. So we've got a lot of room to work here on this spring and shock. This is my first time with this lift, lifting a truck this big. And uh, a little nervous, but it's a 9,000 pound lift. And I think this truck is like six or 7,000 pounds. We did have to put the lift arm on the radius arm and the radius arm needs to droop. So when we go to do the front, we might have to reposition the lift, but we'll see how it goes. We got the sway bar disconnected and tied up out of the way. Our end links are just chilling there. We got this, we got these brake line brackets loose and got our vacuum lines disconnected because we're gonna end up replacing these. And then you just saw we've got the track bar taken out. And then Zach actually bought a new joint for this end of the track bar. This one's got over 100,000 miles on it. So we're gonna press a new one of those into the axle real quick. Just saw us press this new track bar joint in place. And then we've got the, the front shocks disconnected at the bottom here. And the spring's getting a little bit, starting to get a little bit loose. And then same thing on the other side. Disconnected here and uh, ready to start dropping this front axle down with our jack here and see if we can't get these strings to come out. So you see they're already loose. We just got to get them past the, uh, the retainer here and down here. So what's going on with the springs? Yep, so when, when you do the, the actual coil install, you're gonna reuse these rubber isolators. I bought new ones, but you wanna be sure you put the actual reservoir mount brackets on top of the coils and this reservoir or uh, uh, isolator and actually put it in the vehicle as one unit. Um, if you put the coil in and this rubber piece in and you forget to put these brackets on, you're gonna have to redo it. Okay. Um, and this kit in particular is a two and a half inch gas kit. So 6.2 gas, 
has a 2.5 inch lift. They make a four and a half inch lift. The coils are passenger and driver dependent. So you'll see a P or a D on the coil itself. The instructions go through this, but the two and a half kit, it doesn't matter. You can put it on either side. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about driver passenger side on this one. No, not today. All right, good deal. Let me show you something that we almost messed up on because we, we've got the axle low enough now that we got the old spring out. But in order to get the new spring in, you need to go even lower. And we noticed this ABS harness was starting to get really tight. It was already a little bit tight. So we pulled it out of the frame over here on both sides so we didn't pull on that. So we actually can't drop the axle down far enough with the stock brake lines installed as well. So we're gonna start putting in our new brake lines right now. So we got the new brake line installed, brake hose installed. It's a lot longer, plenty of room. The only difficulty is uh, this nut was hard to back out of the old block and then it was uh, like the threads on the nut seemed like they were a little stretched. So we had to be really careful as we were going, putting this nut into the new block. I didn't end up chasing the nut or anything, but you might want to. Um, I, you know, I had to use a little bit of force to get this nut started in this new block, but it did, did seem to tighten up okay. We got our spring in here, we got our shock bolted up in our reservoir, and I just hooked this back up, got the brake line bracket installed on the axle there, hooked our vacuum hose back up. We're getting ready to put the track bar back in and bolt the sway bar back up. And then one of the last things we're going to do is pop these caster shims out of here and put some new caster shims in that were supplied with the kit. So you just saw this caster shim go in on time lapse and I will say that it would have been a lot easier to do this shim if we had done it when the coil spring and the brake line were still out of the way. So my recommendation would be if you're if you're going to install these do it when everything else is apart. Uh, don't do it don't do it the way that we did. All right. You need Struggling a little bit there. Yeah, this one's tight. Tight like a tiger. Oh. There we go. Popped it out. You can put those in an ultrasonic cleaner and have them as souvenirs. brake lines installed in there and you can see the instructions tell you to take these 
ABS lines wiring and unclipped them from the rear axle tube here. So we did that to give some more space. And then we'll just end up zip tying these uh, wire, the wiring to the new brake lines. We got those installed and we're ready to get these leaf springs taken apart. All right, so we took our U-bolts off and then got the axle drop down here and we got our helper spring, our factory helper spring off the bottom. And this is where we're running into some issues. We're not super happy with Carly right now. This is the bolt that Carly gives you to go through these new leafs and the existing leaves. And their instructions say that you're gonna to have to drill this out. No big deal. Drill that out. But this bolt is not the right size to go through the existing leaves or even the new leaves that they supplied. Like it won't even start it there. And you can see how much bigger it is in diameter than the factory bolt. And the bolt that came in here, Will and Zach went to the hardware store to go find one the right size, but um, the bolt that came in here is the same size as the factory one. So we started trying to drill out the leaf pack. I already broke off a bit in the leaf pack trying to drill it out, and it's just gonna be a total pain. So we figured it would be better to go try to find a bolt that would actually work. So we don't know if Carly shipped us the wrong size bolt, maybe for a different vehicle, but it wouldn't have worked at all. And rather than drilling out brand new springs, we've got to get a different bolt. The other thing is we haven't got to the rear shocks yet. We got the, the old shocks out, but the new shocks the instructions say that the reservoirs attach to the cross member up here with a, a bracket that's supplied, but we don't have a bracket or hose clamps for the rear shock reservoirs. So got some part issues from Carly going on. Dogs. They brought the hot dogs back. Are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. Okay. So, so I bought some rubber to see if we can use this to insulate between the reservoir mounts because we're going to do like you said we're going to mount the shocks where the reservoir is right against the body of the shock yeah i already i already made a little clip saying that uh carly did not give us any brackets for the sh oh my god those are huge we've got some big hose clamps okay for the record this isn't straight from carly <laughs> these are out no, of the company these are, Traverse City, these, so. these, oh it's not carly it's what's the company Eight lug truck gear. Eight lug truck Traverse gear. City. Okay. Well, Will, Will came in with TB, the TBD, done. whether it was Carly's mess up or eight lug truck gear's it's mess probably up. Carly's, to be honest. Yeah, it probably is Carly's. The, the harder they, they came with it that doesn't fit through. Oh, yeah. So I explained that. Yep. Doesn't fit through there. And then and the new. Ooh, look at those. A new, uh, grade grade eight, grade five. Grade eight. Maybe. Okay. It's a little the same length. Okay. Yeah, they if you take right. this off, they're the same. Cool. Hopefully we got enough threads there to do what we need to do to figure it out. What size is it? Seven sixteenths. Okay. Fourteen by six. All right. Of course. Cool. Let's get these put together. So I want to show this real quick before we put the right side together. 
but this is that bolt that we're not using. The other reason this bolt doesn't work is because it would have had to sit in there and sit flush. So it was never going to fit in this factory block bump stop. And so even the bolt we just bought, what I did was I just took and grinded down the edges of the bolt. So now that sits in there nice and flush and we won't have any issues when we go to put that together. So we got both leaf packs bolted together. Will and Zach are trying to route this one reservoir up over the exhaust. We're actually going to bolt the shocks to the axle now while it's drooped down because they're really hard to compress with the nitrogen charge in them. And we're going to jack up the axle with the shocks attached and U-bolt everything together. got this side bolted up, just snugged up for now. You can see how long these U-bolts are. So we're actually going to, once we get this thing up higher in the air, we're going to come back and cut those off so they're not hanging down. And then you can see, you can see what we had to do. We had to put some spacers in here because the bolt that we got was uh, too long and since it wasn't threaded the whole way through, uh, we ran out of threads and had to put some spacers here. And then we'll have to get a nut to go on top. So that kind of is what it is. Doesn't affect the, the function at all, but not the greatest looking thing. But we're going to blame Carly for, for that one. And then uh, you guys get this side yep. snugged up. Not like super snug. Not we, super snug. Snug them tight. I think we should uh, cut those, cut the extra length off the U-bolts. Okay. And then we can just impact them up the rest of the way. So I got my U-bolts cut off and snug down. We got the, the shock bolts. Zach actually bought new hardware for all the shock bolts. We got the shock bolts torqued to factory specs, top and bottom. The bottom is 66, the top is 52. And now Zach and Will are trying to figure out how to mount these reservoirs temporarily until we can figure out from Carly what hardware we're missing they're supposed to mount to this cross member here so we're just going to figure out something for now and then while i was cutting will and zach were going around bleeding all the brakes just gravity bleeding the brakes for now and then we'll put someone in there and pressure bleed them and check everything for leaks in a little bit here i'm not sure how it's going to come across in the video but we Started this around 10 in the morning and uh, it's just about 10 o'clock at night now. So we've been at it for about 12 hours with a couple breaks for lunch and uh, some other stuff. But yeah, it's a long day. Will just spent a bunch of time temporarily mounting these reservoirs because uh, Carly did not provide any brackets or hose clamps or anything. And so I realized that that doesn't look great, but we got to get Zach down the road tonight and he's going to get in touch with Carly and the company that he got these, the kit from and try to get some brackets and uh, hopefully we'll get some answers about that. But for now, we've just got these things, uh, tucked up there and they're not going to go anywhere. So 
So the very last thing we've got to do here, we've got the front tires back on, is we just set the truck down and loaded the rear suspension back up under the axle. And then Zach is working on torquing these U-bolts to their final torque, which is 110 foot-pounds specified by Carly. This is the last step. We got the brakes all bled, and that looks good. I'm gonna do this and get the wheels back on. Looking good. You like it, Zach? Yeah, this reminds me of the, the newer gens because we had those sit pretty tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looks good. It looks yeah, really good. Yeah. People people are gonna see these reservoirs poking out of here and think, you know. I mean, it, it looks it looks like a new truck, like a seventeen or newer. Yeah. But with the steel, with the factory steel wheels. Yeah, it's tall though, isn't it? Yeah, it is tall. Let's measure it before driving into any parking garages. Well, that's the other thing is at the height I was at with those tires, I was as tall as his Raptor. Mm -hmm. I was narrower and as tall as his Raptor. All right, so it's been a week and Zach's back with the Super Duty and he was able to talk to 8 Lug Truck Gear where he got where he purchased the Carly lift from and they shipped out the rear reservoir brackets that were missing. So it's these four hose clamps, these brackets, and these self tappers. So we're going to clean up the back reservoir mounting, hopefully with these. So the other thing we're going to do is that you can see this, uh, this track bar has been just barely hitting the engine cross member, the engine cradle there. You can see it from the side on the track bar itself. And the instruction said you may or may not have to do some grinding on this piece to clearance that. So we didn't do it last time. We figured we'd just see how it went. And uh, you can see we just, just barely rubbing. So we'll take a grinder and hit that a little bit. I got this ground down. See, I didn't take much off at all, but hopefully that's enough. And Zach's gonna hit that with some paint when he gets home. So the other thing I forgot to mention in the front here, we started the video out showing you that the lift arms were on the radius arms. And we weren't sure if we were gonna have to move them to get the radius arms to come down far enough. But actually, even with the lift arms sitting right here, the front suspension was able to drop enough without creating a really bad angle here for the lift. So it worked out really well. Now here in the back, Will and Zach just got these new reservoir brackets mounted. So that's gonna, that's gonna look way better than what we had there before. And actually this hole here, there was a vent for the EVAP system. Uh, you know, coming, that's where like the EVAP vent tube sits up in this cross member here. And that cross member was plugged with a bunch of dirt anyway. And Zach's having some trouble filling the truck up with the gas pump clicking off because that vent was plugged up. So we're not going to put the vent back in that hole. We're going to find a better spot to attach that EVAP vent to. All right, so Zach just finished bolting up these reservoirs. 
So this one looks really good. This is the left side reservoir. The instructions from Carly actually wanted this reservoir to sit uh, on the back side of this cross member here, but you can see this the spare tire cross member, which is welded in. You can't take that down. It would have made it really hard to come in from this side and drill holes and get the self tappers in. So we just mounted it here under the cross member. It's not in the way of anything. Looks really good. So we're happy with that. And then let me come around here. And then this is the right side reservoir mounted to the back of the cross member just like they wanted it. So the reservoirs look really good and clean now. And we went back and retorqued our U-bolts because Zach's been driving the truck for about a week. But this thing is 100% uh, done now. All right, so we just got back from a ride in the truck. It's 100% done now. It felt, it feels awesome. How do you like the suspension, Zach? Uh, it's, it's night and day difference. Um, just even just handling in general, when you accelerate from a turn, the Super Duties are really bad about bouncing, wheel hopping in the rear. And you try to go and the truck just won't go, traction control kicks on, and, and now it doesn't even miss a beat. I mean, the tires stay planted. Um, it, it kind of feels like you're driving an F-150 a little bit. Yeah, I was really, I was really surprised. I think it rides better than my truck, my F-150 on these dirt roads here. So yeah, man, it feels great. And then, yeah. uh, and then we did, so you, you called eight lug, um, truck gear. eight lug truck gear. They confirmed that we got Dodge bolts in the, for the back leaf springs. That's what happened, right? Yeah. The, the Carly, we, I reached out to Carly directly. They confirmed we had Dodge center pins for the rear leaves. Uh, a lug truck gear. I did reach out to them to get the reservoir mounts for the rear, um, and they sent those. I mean, same day. I mean, it was immediate. So, Carly's working to send me the correct center pins, um, but I mean, overall, you know, it was a mistake. And I, I think Carly kind of owned up to it, and they, they're sending me the right stuff. Okay, so we're still, we're still good with Carly's customer service right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy. I mean, the just the packages overall are. It, it makes it feel like a completely different truck. So I'm good. Yeah, I mean, really high quality. You can tell that the shock tuning is really tuned well for the truck. And then um, I guess the one thing we did find out is that the center pins for those leaf packs are actually grade 10.9. And we only put a grade eight bolt in there. And it's it's really just to center the packs. It's not It's not that structural, but I think when you get the right pins for the rear packs at some point we'll go in and and try to put those in there so we're not we're not recommending anyone swap that out for a grade 8 bolt like we did it's just kind of a temporary fix for us yep. so yeah the u-bolts i mean the u-bolts that came with the kit were perfectly fine they're they're structurally holding it to the axle they're they're nice and long so we had to trim them down a bit but um yeah i mean just centering the leaves it's, it's not a huge deal yeah well, cool. I think I think now we're actually this time we're actually done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll catch everyone next time. Bye.